This meeting is being recorded. Okay, Marion, the star. Welcome to the Learning Tree Book Club. We read on first Saturdays of the month from for one and a for one hour and a half. I'm Marion Yusuf. I'm I'm eleven years old. And I am in fifth grade. I I am seven. I am seven years old, and I am in. And I'm today, up. Today I'm going to be reading ten rules of the birthday wish. I am going to be reading Bunny Bunny's Book Club. Bun Bunny's Book Club. Bunny loves books. He loved them ever since he, he first heard the lady with the red glasses read out, re, reading outside of the library. As he listened, Bunny imagined herself climbing mountains, tapping, tapping a ship, rowing a kingdom. When summer ended, story time moved back inside. Bunny wasn't sure if animals were allowed in the library, but Bunny was sure he couldn't live without books. Night after night, he could hardly sleep for wishing he had something to do. So with a flashlight in his paw and hope in his heart, Bunny jumped out of bed and tiptoe through the dark. But when he reached the, the library door, it was locked. So there, there, so there the windows Bunny tried digging, climbing, and yanking, nothing worked, until he finally noticed. The book returned. The shiny candle was far above his head, but there is no match for a high Hopping bunny, hungry, hung, hungry for books. Bunny leap. He climbed to the bar, lunging his himself over and wriggling in his cotton tail through the slot. He landed with a big. Well. Bunny eyes sparkled at the sight of the shelves. 
first bursting with books. It was better than a field of fresh, crunchy carrots. Bunny didn't know where to start. He took a deep breath and it smelled as if he if he was wrapped inside the pages of his favorite book. He followed his not his nose to the adventure section. section. He found stories about swashbuckle shark swashbuckle sharks and superheroes. Bunny Ridley got them all. His whiskers twitched with excitement. He slipped. He slipped his treasure through the the box lock one by one. Then performed his best balance act. Bunny wobbled home. He couldn't wait to dig in. And so Bunny re returned into the library. Each night, he searched and sneaked, then scattered scared, then back to read. Soon, he sold him more books than borrowed. And one evening, and now he got Sergeant Porcupine reading, said Bunny. Why? said Porcupine. Bunny eyes popped wide open. Why? he spurted. Have you ever been in to the library? It was time for Bunny to let Porcupine in, in on his secrets. Are you sure this is a good idea? Said Bunny, I'm too concerned into a pop one per porcupine. Bunny slid and flipped on his flashlight. Whoa, said porcupine. I know, said Bunny. Do you know there's a story about balloons? I always wonder about balloons. Most definitely, said Bunny. Sure enough, Porcupine found books about on books on balloons and on deserts and Uh, and raccoon. When Bunny handed hand hand the stop, they so hard they can barely carry them. Back at Bun Bunny's, they close up with cups of tea and carrot balls.
um, that <clears throat> that Carl fell so like, we'll, we'll see if she can get back in so she can finish her book. Hey, Vicky. Vicky, what you reading today? I can't hear you. I'll mute your phone. Oh, okay. Did you um crack open um flight of a saint yesterday? Oh, I can't, I can't hear you. Okay. What, uh, what'd you say? I said I did scan it. I didn't, I didn't get to read it, but I did scan it. And it's going to be really good when I really read it. So when I, so. Yeah, yeah, I thought so too. Yeah, so uh, I'm not sure. Maybe they have some internet um, issues. You want to start reading? I'm not. I don't know if I'm going to read today because my throat is a little. So. Oh, they here. They came uh, back. Huh? No, they did. Yeah, oh, you can start reading uh, the sheet of the, the sheet of what is it? You show the name and show holding the book up. Until they come back. Yeah, it says it says the the city of business the Mississippi State Capitol. Yes. I know that offer. <laughs> <laughs> and as it says, and she writes in chapter one, local history. 1817, Mississippi became the 20th state to join the United States of America, has been nicknamed Magnolia State and the Hospitality State. The word of Mississippi comes from an Indian word, which means father of waters. This river is the second largest river in North America. Once upon a time, white settlers were looking for a land in the center of Mississippi, build our state capital. At that time, our main government building was in Natchez, Mississippi. Natchez is off the Mississippi River near Vidalia, Louisiana. Today, cars drive over Mississippi State River across the bridge from Natchez to Vidalia. Back then, people took the ferry across the Mississippi River to travel from Natchez to Vidalia, and ferry was the largest float made with wood. People paid a fare to ride the ferry. The ferry guide collected a fare, collected the fare, and navigated the ferry to float toward Vidalia toward Mississippi, toward, toward Natchez. Several land inspectors so, solicited a travel post called Le Fleur Bluff. In the present day, Jackson is the suitable site for our state capital. A French Canadian named Louis Le Fleur, French, at the first European settled at the trading post. So the settlement was named for him. Today, the site of that settlement off of Lakeland Drive near Mississippi Agriculture and Forestry Museum. In 1821, LaFleur's Bluff was renamed Jackson after Andrew Jackson. The state capital was built on State Street because it was near the river. 
which was the river supply. Today, that river is known as the Pearl River. Mama said the city of Jackson became the seat of the Mississippi government in 1906, 196 years ago. Andrew Jackson was the military leader and he was the seventh president of the United States of America in 1829 to 1837. He was the only president who was a slave trader. Hmm. He purchased slaves, sold them for profit. Profit is the extra money you have left over after, extra money you have left over after, subtract the cost. It paid $10 a male boy sold him for $80. His profit was 70. Andrew Jackson auctioned the slaves, owned slaves, made a lot of money and lived in a very large mansion. He founded the Democratic Party. He directed the removal of Indians in 1830 and famous Trail of Tears was forced thousands of Indians marched across the winter without enough food and blankets. Their march was called the Death March. The Biloxi Indians lived in Mississippi over 10,000 years ago, which was, which was many years before the Europeans came here, slightly over 200 years ago. Indians were still enjoying their way of life. Indian boys love to play ball and like to do to, as we like to do today, painting above the shows and the shows playing ball. The picture di displays a time of peace for Indians. The city of my birth was named after a man who sold my ancestors into slavery. The enslavement of Africans destroyed our customs. Meredith? And uh, the enslavement of Africans destroyed our customs. Andrew Jackson helped destroy the Indian traditions too. Grandma Ninja told me we have African and Choctaw Indian ancestors. Her grandmother was Choctaw. She lived about a hundred years, hundred miles from here in Louisville. Her hair was, her hair, excuse me, her hair was so long she could sit on it. <laughs> Daddy told me white historians consider Mr. Jackson a hero because he helped United States government force Indians from the land to make room for white settlers. Mama said it is important to learn history. Even if we do not like them, we must learn. In 1820s, the local government sold lots, section of land to new white settlers. By the middle of the 1830s, the city of Jackson was a wooded area with a dozens of cabins and several buildings. Daddy said wars, on, wars have been fought over land and power since the beginning of time. People die in wars. Daddy says the great North, North African, Jennifer Hannibal, Hannibal, and the great king of South Africa, the Shuka Zulu, led armies into battle. I read about them. I have over 156 books on my bookshelf from my bedroom, Hannibal and Shakata Zulu were African heroes. 
Huh? Did you get to a stopping point? Yeah. Since they big, so you can let them breathe. Okay. Hold up a second. Let me finish that a paragraph. I'll be at the stopping point. And Shaka Zulu. And Shaka yeah, Zulu. Yeah. That's, uh, Shaka Zulu. And so what it's, okay. yeah, and that's General Hannibal from Africa. Yeah, General Hannibal with General Hannibal. Thank you so much. General Hannibal and Shaka Zulu were African heroes. Some of the books in my in my room belonged to my mother and my uncle daddy when they were children. Uncle Daddy died from lupus when I was a baby. A picture of him holding me on the wall in my room is a beautiful slave frame. Beautiful silver frame. Okay, that's a stopping point. Okay, uh, Charlotte Ma, you want to uh, pick up where you uh, left off at? And then uh, Mary Ann could read. Thank you. Oh my bear no Okay, Victor. You uh go ahead and pick back up where you stop. We lost them again. They have some internet issues um today, but we'll get through it. Oh, unmute yourself, Vicky. Okay. The picture of our whites of African-American boys playing in the cannibal battle, breathtaking because of the boys were in, were in the moment, happy, pretending to be something that a make-believe world, a canon very destructive. The first boy in the picture had his arms folded and his hands out if, if, if he was holding something. The other three boys were holding the back of the boy's jacket while sitting in front of him. It Hold the picture up, like, so we can see you. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Uh -oh. Hold up a second. Can you see the, uh, what the, uh, the boy sitting on the cannon? Can yeah. you see it, Solomon? Can you see it, Solomon? They sitting on the cannon like they're riding the horse. Are is your uh Mary Ann is your camera uh, frozen again? Can you say something? Thank you, Victor. Go ahead, Vic, because they, they dropped again. That, uh, they, they'll probably be back. Okay. The first boy in the picture had his arms folded on his arms folded and his hands out as if he was holding, um, holding something. The other three boys were holding the back of the boy's jacket in front. It looked like they were pretending to be riding horses. Okay, Vicky, they, were... uh, they, they came back and they got uh, their, um, 
but Campbell is stable, so we'll let them uh, okay. finish their reading. Oh, um, but okay. in Campbell, I mean, the Campbell is stable. Okay, okay. Uh, Solomon, you go ahead. Okay, do you have any books about outer, outer space? Sandberg? Or about volcanoes at small e and I like a ghost story said mouse. I think it's time for a field trip said Lenny. One by one. The animals stuffed themselves inside the lake bear. Bear caught a, a bit of the lake. They, scram, they scram, scrambled about. They scattered about, about, slamming their stacks, piling over pages. Squirrel gathered, gathered books and the circuits like boom ladders about one about out claws and band bandits frog found a fairy tale no one heard the key in the front door no one heard the quack quack quacking of footsteps no one heard the light click on What do we have here? said the librarian. The animals looked up in shock. Bunny gap. Porcupine gaps. Bear growled. Follow me, she said. The animals marched slowly behind him. We're done for, whispered Porcupine. All librarians have rules, said the librarian. Certainly, Bunny was her step. Porcupine back with bare eyes on the door. Bunny stepped forward to take the the bay, the blade. The library laid it down. The rule, the first rule is every book lover must have one of these. She said she handled, she handed Bunny and his friends shiny new librarian cards. Now you may borrow books, she said smiling, as long as you return them. Of course, Bunny couldn't believe his ears. They can keep coming to the library. He, he beamed at his fellow reader, readers, then bowed to the shelves. He picked the favorite book, and he proudly checked out for out the very first official section for. Bunny's Book Club. The end. Solomon, you finished your book? Yes. <laughs>
can you give us a um a summary about um uh, what you read and i noticed that there was a uh, a lot of books in like the library there was a lot of people in the book club and they were reading a lot of books Um, it's about a bunny loves books and he decided to, and he didn't know if animals were supposed to be in the library. So he came each night to get a new book so he can read and to make his own book club. Okay, so it was a lot of animals in his book club. Yeah. Oh, I bet you they had a lot of fun like we do. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, girl. Uh, Mary Ann, are you uh, ready? I'm going to be reading 10 Rules of the Birthday Wish. Rule number one, it must be your birthday or close to your birthday sometime in the last or next week. Your age should have increased by one, unless you're a beetle, bug, or insect. If your life cycle is a month or a week or sniff, sniff, uh, or only a single day, please celebrate immediately ASAP. Flutter, flap, fly. Right, right on over to rule number two. Rule number two. You must must have a party, a celebration, hoopla, or gym, gym board. There should be games and laughter and definitely hats. Hats it immediately elevate the party mood. Food is also a good idea. See rule number three. As our streamers, confetti, and balloons, unless you are a rhinosaurus. If you are a rhinosaurus, a swordfish, a sea urchin, or pointy in any way, you may want to skip the balloons. Rule number three, you must have cake, cannoli, cream puffs, or Cheerios. Your dessert does not have to specifically start with the letter C, even if some of the best desserts do. The letter P or B or even I, whatever your dessert starts with, it must be sturdy enough to accommodate. Rule number four, you must have a light or lights to blow up. Traditionally, this will this would be a candle, but it could also be a spark plug. Unless you are a whale or a frog. If you are a whale, you may want to invite some fluorescent jellyfish to your party. If you're frog, consider, if you're a frog, consider using fireflies as your candle and your dessert. Combining rules is completely acceptable. Either way, something light must
go dark. Rule number five, there must be singing. Traditionally, the happy birthday song, sung happily and loudly, definitely off key, unless your friends are feathered. If you're lucky enough to have friends who can warble, croon, and carry a tune, sit back and enjoy the show. Rule number six, you must close your eyes. Closing your eyes will keep your wish safe inside your head where it can grow into something ordinary, into something extraordinary. Rule number seven, you must take a deep breath. This will ensure the success of rule number nine. Unless you are a puffer fish. If you are a puffer fish, definitely do not take a big breath because you will puff up and all your guests will be concerned. Everyone knows a, puffer, a puffed up puffer fish is not a happy puffer fish. And, that, and happy is a big part of a birthday. Rule number eight, this is a big one. You must make a wish, just one wish, a single wonderful, amazing wish. It could be a big wish or a little wish. It could be a now wish or a later wish, but it could, but it should definitely be a, can't think of anything greater wish. Rule number nine, you must blow up the candles in one single breath, unless you're a camel. Rule number 10, if you are a camel, you will most likely spit on the cake as our as you are blowing out the candles. No one wants to eat a cake spritzed with the camel spit. So please ask friends to help. Combining breaths is completely acceptable. Rule number 10, don't forget that wish ends in a shh. So keep your wish quiet, silent, hush, hush. And when the fun is done and your friends have left, the moon is high in the sky. Close your eyes and dream. Of your wish coming true. Miriam, when you have a birthday party, do you follow all 10 of those rules or, or most of them? Can 
Huh? No, I was asking you, when you have a birthday party, do you follow all 10 of the rules that you just read in the book? What was your question? Oh, when you have a birthday party, do you follow all the rules that would that was in your book about the ten rules of a birthday party? You follow all of them or most of them? The rules you just read, like singing the birthday song. I I, I took a note that that was a rule. Closing yeah. your eyes and making a wish. Yes, I follow okay. all the birth. The, I follow all the rules of the birthday wish. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Because you can't make a wish unless you close your eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was a cool book. Thank you. Uh huh. Okay, so y'all gonna have another one, right? Because I think we will have time for uh, another book. And uh, yeah. I guess yeah. we can read a a few pages of uh of her book. Vicky, you read it? Unmute yourself. Okay. We're on uh, four governors from we're on the chapter chapter two. Four governors from 1900 to 1916. Who were the uh, about nine four men were governors of the Mississippi from 1900 to 1916. Andrew Longino was the first of the four governors. His important to the he is important to the history of the Mississippi State Capitol because he authorized the construction. The Mississippi State Senate and the House of Representatives approved the bill to build the new capital of govern of the governor. Longino sat at his desk, signed the bill into law. A bill is an idea for a rule of a rule. Construction started 1901, ended 1903. It took 28 months to build the new capital, build the new capital. It was built on the old site of the state, pen, on the state penitentiary. The penitentiary was torn down and a new building was constructed. The first state building, the first state capital building was built in 1839 on State Street. It was 61 years old when the carpenters said the workers started construction. Lawmakers called the first state capital, the old capital to start the first state capital the old Capitol today. Today it is called the old Capitol Museum because the museum people form around that world, uh, around the people from around the world visited. Governor Longero graduated from the Mississippi College of Clinton. He was the first governor to get, to get a degree from a college in the state of Mississippi, Mississippi College. Mississippi College was created in 1826. It was the first college. The idea to create a toy bear, teddy bear, was inspired by this event that happened 100 years ago during Governor Longino's term of office. At that time, President, Theodore Roosevelt came to the state and went bear hunting in the Mississippi Delta. 
President Roosevelt's nickname was Teddy. He was the 26th president of the United States. An African-American uh, man named Holt Collier, Collier was the president of the tour guide. While they were traveling through the woods, the president came up on a bear who was tied down and refused to shoot. He refused to shoot it. Cartoon artists drew a picture of, let me see if there's a, here's a picture of Teddy Roosevelt and his hunting up in the Greenwood in the Delta when he ran across the bear that got nicknamed Teddy Bear. That's the picture of, of his hunting. Hold on, did did you did y'all see the picture? Hold up for one second. Y'all see the little bear over there? Yeah, we see it. Yeah. They saw a big. Okay. An African American man named Holt Collier was the president was the president's tour guide while they were traveling through the woods president came upon a bear who was tied down and refused to shoot it a cartoon artist drew a picture of the president refusing to shoot the bear the owner of the toy company brooklyn new york saw the picture and made the toy bear named Teddy bear in honor of President uh, uh, President Roosevelt Jr. That's not Jr. President Roosevelt. At that time, Illinois Cap Illinois Central Railroad was owed Mississippi uh, one point one million dollars in in that one million. One million dollars in back taxes. They did not want to pay their tax bill. Therefore, the state of Mississippi sued the railroads company in court and ordered him to pay their taxes. The money from the court settlement was used to build the new capital. It cost the state. One million nine hundred one million ninety three thousand sixty six hundred and forty one dollars. The railroad company was making a lot of money in 1903. The train was the most modern form of transportation, was the fastest way to travel. Signing the bill into office, into law, construct the new state capital was the big, big achievement. Governor Longero also signed a law that ordered, this, ordered to build a new state penitentiary. The site of Parchment Plantation, his office also created Mississippi Department of Archives and History. Governor Longino signed the bill, in, bill into law, amending the Mississippi Constitution by requiring the judges to be elected to the office by voters rather than being appointed to office. Isn't that one of your family members, Meredith? In no, 19 no, 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 no. That he, my, my oh. family member was not, he was a Supreme Court Justice and a, a, a circuit ju judge in Harris County. That, oh. that's the, that was a governor who signed those yeah, bills that allowed to create those. Okay. Yeah, larger no created the, uh, those three institutions, uh, the state capital, the, oh. the, the a president at, on the Parliament Plantation, and the Mississippi Department of Archives and History. 
downtown. And, 19, and 1903 started the primary system to nominate the candidate for public office. Governor Longino was the last governor to be nominated to the state party convention. During Governor Longino's term of office, Mississippi A&M College was formed in Starkville. Okay? It was called the Mississippi State University today. My cousin, Jared, played football for those Bulldogs. Governor Longino served four years governor. Then James Kimball Vardaman was elected. Mr. Vardaman became the 36th governor. He served from 1904 to 1908. He was the first governor to have his inauguration in the new state capital. He was a lawyer in Winona, Mississippi. And when he was elected to office, he was a writer too. He was once the editor of the Winona, at, uh, Winona Ad Adventist newspaper. In 1890, Governor Barnamo, Mississippi Barterman became the editor of the Greenwood Enterprise in 1896. He founded his own newspaper called the Greenwood Commonwealth. The newspaper started over 120 years ago. The Greenwood Commonwealth is one of the most oldest surviving newspapers in the state. His office placed regulations of the largest companies. He fought against the convict quote, prisoners lease system. He was against prisoners being leased to plantations, owners, and the railroad. He was against the companies working children long hours. He was very popular with small farmers and poor whites. However, business persons who owned or managed large companies did not care for him. Governor Vardamo supported laws that protected his race. He did not believe that the laws should protect African Americans. He publicly spoke against funding public education for African Americans. He believed the state should close public systems, public schools for African Americans. African Americans paid taxes that the state collected, yet Governor Bottomman did not want to, did not want to spend the state funds to educate them. He argued lawmakers should abolish and African American voting rights and other rights to hold public office. The town of Bottomman is in Calhoun County, is named after him. He only served one term of office. Some lawmakers pay, uh, made enough money to buy the Model T Ford car. Here's a picture of the Model T Ford. That was the first Model T Ford right here. Can you see that? That was the first Model T yes. Ford car, Model T Ford. The Ford company, uh, they spent, the speed limit was 12 miles an hour. Was pale, black, back then, working class citizens walked, rode horses, or rode in horse-drawn wagons. Automobile passengers probably took umbrellas with them in case of rain because the first Model T Ford Model T car did not have a roof. 
Mr. Ford's car invention was very important. Today, Ford is one of the first, one of the three largest car manufacturers in the United States. Edmund Faber Noel was the 37th governor. He was 1808 to eight, I mean 1908 to 1912. When he was elected governor, he he was over 60 years old. Some residents wanted to tear down. tear down the governor's house and the old state capitol because it was going to cost the state a lot of money to repair both buildings. Governor Noel inf influenced the lawmakers to renovate the governor's state house, governor's house and the old capitol. And his wife, Alice, lived in Edward Hotel while the governor house was being renovated. Hmm. The construction crew turned the governor's house into two-story mansion. They placed yellow bricks on the new section of the, of the house. Therefore, they painted the original section of the house into, to match the bricks. During Governor Noel's four terms in office, four years in office, educational reforms were passed. His office emerged rural school districts. His office merged rural school districts and created agricultural high schools. Back then the high school teachers taught children how to farm and raise livestock. In those days, people produced their own food. They had chicken and vegetable gardens in their yards. Today, citizens buy most of their food from grocery stores. A charity hospital built in Jackson on State Street Charity hospitals served patients even if they did not have any money. African 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 American patients were served in the colored ward of the back of the building. Governor Noel passed a law making it illegal for citizens and businesses to make, sell, and drink alcohol. On the first, on the uh, was the first state to create alcohol prohibition. The alcohol, the South was called the Bible Belt, because in Southern lawmakers are influenced by the rules of the Bible. In 1911, Earl Leroy Brewer ran got, ran for governor and Democratic ticket. No one challenged him. During the Democrat challenged him during the Democratic primary. He was the first and only Democrat to run in the Democratic primary without an opponent. Mr. Brewer was the 38th president, I keep saying president, was the 38th governor of our state. He served from 1912 to 1916. At that time, most of Mississippi Southern white voters were members of the Democratic Party. Northern, white, Northern whites belonged to the Republican Party. During the general election, S.W. Rose opposed Mr. Brewer and was the strange, it was a strange because because Mr. Rose was the first name of two letters. Mr. Rose was a member of the Socialist Party. He only received 2,049 uh, 40, votes. 2,049 2, uh, 2, votes. 
Mr. Brewer was a very popular. He won a race with most of the votes. Lawmakers called him, they call this a landslide. Governor Brewer had the largest parade in the public reception of all of the 37 governors before him. The railroad company gave people a discount on train fares and thousands of citizens rode the train to attend inauguration. Governor Brewer was the first governor to have a law degree from the University of Mississippi Law School. The law degree was created in 1854. Mississippi's legislature charted University of Mississippi in 1844. He was a very good lawyer. He helped one of his clients get a, get a large amount of money from the Illinois, State, Illinois Central Railroad. While he was governor, a teacher called the Mississippi Normal School was created. It was later renamed as University of Southern Mississippi. Governor Brewer signed the new child labor law. The new law stopped girls under age 14 and boys under age 12 from working, industrial working in industrial companies. They should work children for 15 and up could not work over eight hours per day. The railroad had large number of operations with industrial companies. The child labor law protected poor white children. However, they did not protect African-American immigrant children. At age five, Manuel pictured on the next Manuel, pictured on this next page, was standing beside a heap of shrimp and the hard working was visible. And he is, his legs were dusty and his clothes were dirty. Here he is here. That shows a picture of, uh, it shows a picture of the child one of the child labor law workers. And, and here, here were the, uh, as they say, cotton pickers. Second, the second picture down here because they were the ones that was picking the cottons when the child laborers that were picking cotton at the second, the second picture. Oh, you can get your stopping for in a minute so you can let, uh, let them read their second book. Okay, I'm at a stopping point now, okay. When I showed them the pictures of the, picture of the, of the children working, Let me see. The picture that's shown below, African-American children were young and perhaps four workers in the, on the cotton field and, the, and the sitting in on a horse on the, and, and uh, sitting on the horse while, while the overseer supervised the workers. The Duncan family was a white family of seven. Most of them worked long hours in the cotton mill. And November, November 6, 1900, Mississippi legislature voted the use of money collected from poll taxes to the county school fund. Huh. African-Americans had to pay poll taxes before they could vote. However, many could not afford to pay poll taxes, which kept them from voting. 
whites were not required to pay for poll taxes. This law was not fair. The law today, it is against the law for one group of the citizens to discriminate against another group. In those days, African-American children's schools were not fully funded. Their books were used. Sometimes the pages were gone, pages were uh, missing. Some students walked to school. During that Jim Crow South in, eight, in 1939, James Meredith walked Four, four and a half miles to school. It took one hour to walk to school and one hour to walk back. He lived in a rural area. However, white children were bused to schools and they could and they and they had new books too. Stacy's grandfather paid Poe paid a fare in the 1740s to ride the city bus to the Smith Robinson School. He lived on West Street. African Americans sat in the back of the bus in, his, uh, in the back of the bus in a, a colored section. Whites sat in the front of the bus. At that time, funds were used to bus local white children to school. Jim Crow laws was not fair to the African students, African American students, but whites received special treatment. Okay, that's I guess that's a stopping point right there. Okay. Uh Miriam, uh in school, so far have y'all read about Jim Crow laws? No, not yet. Okay, okay. All right. Oh, so what? What? Uh, what's yeah. your second book? Both of y'all have a second book. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I'm reading Cup and Bear. Okay. When the great gray owl swooped down, stretching, hoo hoo! The Arctic wolves knew that the big freeze was on its way. <laughs> they took shelter in a snowdrift and they listened to the fierce wind holler and roar. They watched the snow blow in spirals, wrapping the world in a fluffy white coat. But then the wind's bitter cold breath turned, turned warm and the sun appeared. The big milk came. One and one lone pup found itself on a sheet of ice spinning out to sea. The pups slid into the water. He swam and he swam. When he reached land, he burrowed into a, into a snow bank. He was tired and he wanted his mother. The pup closed his eyes and fell asleep, listening to the throb of silence across the still landscape. He woke to feel 
of a cold nose against his fur. He, the smell was familiar. It was a polar bear. You are not my mother, said the pup, pup so flattening his ears against his head. I am not your mother, said the polar bear, but I can cuddle you and keep you safe. The pup was shy and frightened. Aren't you going to eat me, he asked. Polar bears eat wolves. Not this one, said the polar bear, shaking his head. Climb on my back and I'll take you to my den. Is that a polar bear? Yes. Okay. And the pub is a small brown bear. Yeah. The pup stretched the paw forward cautiously. Then he climbed onto the polar bear's back. And they crossed the tundra under the watchful eyes of a tree, a trio, a tree trio of baby puffins learning to fly. Back at the den, the polar bear licked and cleaned the pup. I'm not your mother, she said, but I can feed you and keep you warm. The next day, they set off across the wintry tundra. When they spotted a walrus with long, sharp tusks, the polar bear Belowed and chuffed. What are we doing? asked the papa they near the water. I am not your mother, she said the polar bear but I can show you what to catch a fish. They passed the snow goose pierced on a nest of eggs. They sniffed the trail of, of a seal as he tried to outsmart them. And they stopped at the water's edge where the fish and the lemons came and went in the wonders wheel of life. The sun shone down on the crisp, crackling snow and the polar bear rolled into a snow bank. Come on, said the pup. She said to the pup, I am not your mother, but I can play with you. But when the pup tugged too hard at the polar bear's fur, he growled. I am not your mother, she said, but I can scold you. Then she nuzzled the pup and tickled his tummy. Tired at last, the pup curled up against the bear, and they napped to listening to the wind whimper and sigh.
the earth turned around and around and the big freeze came, followed by the big melt. Until at last the polar bear nudged the wolf, who wasn't a pup any longer. I'm not your mother, she said, but I know it's time for you to go. She nuzzled the wolf one last time and the wolf nuzzled her back. Then he walked out into the wide world. The wolf howled to the midnight sun, which growled on the horizon, where day ended and night became, began. And he was answered by the cry of another wolf. Soon he was leaving his own path across the frozen tundra. A snow drift. Where is your mother? asked the wolf. The cub didn't Aren't you going to eat me? asked the cub. Wolves eat polar bears. Not this one, said the wolf. Just climb on my back and I will take you to my den. The polar bear clambered onto the wolf's back. I'm not your mother, said the wolf, but you can stay with me until you're big enough to be on your own. That was a wolf in the pup. The wolf led the pack back across the tundra along the path. There was a wolf and a cub, a, a baby polar bear. The wolf led the pack across the tundra along the path that went around and around in the wondrous wheel of life. That's the end of the book. Okay, give, give us a, a brief summary of the uh, story that you just read. Well, when the wolf was a little pup, he got lost from his pack and a polar bear found him and took care of him until he was old enough to be on, it, on his own. Then later, when he had his own pack and he was Leading his pack through the tundra, he found a baby polar bear, a cub. So he decided to take care of him until he was old enough to be on his own, too. Oh, I get it. It was like a, the kindness was re, re, uh, repeated. 
twice in the store. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really nice. Well, thank you for that, uh, Mary. Uh, Silent Mike, you got uh, another book? Yes. Okay. And thank you, Letters. Ten thank you, Letters. Okay. Hello, rabbits. Hello, kids. Want to play? Sure, but first I'm writing a thank you letter to my grandma. She got me this letter for my birthday. Nice. I want. I want to thank my grandma too. a piece of paper pick and a pencil sure dear grandma thank you for the marshmallow cake you always bake bake for my birthday love rapid okay pig i'm done for my letter uh, how about you not yet Rip, rabbit i i am telling my grandma about the letter. But it's a thank you letter. Why, why tell her about the letter? I don't know, Rapper. It's just the way I do it. Well, I just thought of someone who deserves a big thank you letter. Can I borrow another piece of paper, cake? And an envelope and a stamp too. Dear Madam President, thank you for doing a ducky job. Let me know if you need some help. Love, Rabbit. Then, are you finished with your letter, pig? Well, no, I thought, I thought I'll tell Grandma about how I'm helping Mom with chores. Chores? Why are you telling her that? It's a thank you letter. But because Grandma likes it when I help my mom, and and she might want to know how things are going around here. Hey, I just thought of another big person to think. Can I buy more paper? Dear Mr. Lapin, in case you were wondering how things are going around, they are great. Your funny books makes my whole my whole class laugh. Are you done with your letter yet, Pig? No, Rabbit. I want to tell Grandma that I left so much yesterday that loose tooth came out. Mm-hmm. 
Can I have another sheet of paper, kid? Let me guess, you thought of someone else to thank? I sure did. Dear Miss, Mrs. Hank Karen, thanks for teaching us about brushing our teeth. Now I have clean teeth and fresh breath. Love, graphic. This one, this, this one done too. How is your ledger going, kid? Well, I haven't seen my grandma in a while, so there's a lot to tell her. But you keep interrupting. Sorry, kid. Maybe if you just give me a stack of paper and envelope and more stamps, I won't have to bother you. Dear Miss Meese, you are the best librarian. Thanks for finding me so many sports books. Love, rapping. Dear Miss Miss Arthur, thanks for for being a great bus driver and never getting lost on the way to school. Well, rather, dear dear Miss Chicken, thanks for being a great cross. Guard and making sure everyone stick to the other side safe. To the everyone gets to the other side. Well, rabbit. Dear Mr. Hogg, thanks for always being, always giving me carrot pop at your market. Love, rabbit. Dear Mr. Kid, dear Mr. Kid, thanks for delivering all our mail. It's a lot to carry, isn't it? Love, rabbit. There, I'm finished. See you later, okay? I'm off to the mailbox to send my letters. Finally, I, I can't finish my letter. Yay, done. The rabbit used all my envelopes and all of the stamps. Oh no, how will I mail my letters to Grandma now? Ring, ring. Hello, pig. Guess what? I have more envelopes and stamps for you. And I wrote one more letter. One, and I wrote one more thank you letter. I thought I'll deliver it here. I thought I'll deliver it myself here. Thanks, Robert. No one, no one has ever wrote me a thank you letter before. Dear Pig, thank you for expiring Explain with me and being a genius and for being my friend. Love, rather. P.S. Now, are you ready to play catch? Thanks, Robin. Yay, game time! Yes, after a quick stop at the, at the mailbox.
Dear Grandma, thanks for sending me the great birthday sweater. Did you know my favorite color is purple? The weather has been cool, so I can wear the sweater every day. When, when, even when I'm helping Mom wash dishes or sweep the floor. Yesterday, my best friend Lada and I were laughing at a funny thing, and my loose tooth fell out. Oh well, I'll grow another one anyways. Thanks for all. Thanks again for the sweater. I hope you are well. Well, pink. Okay, so that's the end. Yes. What was your favorite thank you letter of all of them? I'm the grandma one. Oh yeah, yeah, cause grandma was a special auntie. <laughs> all right, well, um, uh, it's uh three thirty six Central time, and um, uh, we'll see you guys uh next. First, the first of the month, next time is, uh, let me see if I can see. Okay, this is uh September the third. The next meeting is uh the first Saturday is October the first. Okay then. Well, enjoy the rest of y'all uh, month and thank you for reading <laughs> and after reading. Okay. Okay. See you guys. Bye. 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 <laughs> All right, y'all have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> okay, then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> look, look, so uh -oh. I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> All right.